Hello. Okay, hi guys, welcome. This is me, Bobby Bowler, the life of a delegate. So I'm currently at Nevermind, but, oh, it's me, hello. So currently I do uh, BD at Nevermind for DAOs. And previously I used to work for StableLab. So StableLab is like a governance company. We focus on decentralized governance and working with DAOs. Um, and whilst my time at StableLab, I kind of led the governance team. I did, I was the governance and strategy lead for them. And we were delegates in some of the largest DeFi and layer two DAOs. So some examples are Aave, Balancer, Optimism, One Inch, Arbitrum, and some others. In total, we worked with around 15 to 20 DAOs. And we had a team of four to five governance analysts. And then alongside that, I was also part of some grant committees. So I was part of Optimism Grants Committee, um, Compound, and I was the operations and governance lead for Element Finance, which is a fixed rate protocol. This was all like on behalf of Stable Lab. So in today's talk, we're gonna go through like a few different things. So why are we need delegates? What, what does a delegate do? The day-to-day -day of a delegate, keeping an eye open on delegates, but also the DAO space. And then finally, what is like the next step of delegates? So for my past year experience, what do I think is gonna happen with delegates in the future? Okay, so why do we need delegates? So if we like roll back, back to like DeFi summer 2020, everyone wanted governance tokens because they wanted power, but they wanted exit liquidity, but we don't say that. Um, but in doing so, they wanted to participate in DAOs. But as that happened over time, people realized, okay, we wanted power, but wait, we don't actually care about, or we don't have the time to participate in DAOs. So some of the few reasons were voter apathy. People were voting, but they don't really care. This is something that Mahesh touched on earlier, like, a lot of people were not voting. And then next, um, it's time consuming. And then there was a lack of information or understanding. People don't really understand how DAOs work, how governance works, or DeFi's are too technical for them, so they kind of just give up. And then finally, um, a lack of resources. So you might need like a technical team, an analytics team, or some other type of resources to help you. And then leading on that, so if we look at Compound and Aave, so this is Compound and this is Aave, both of them, they have less than 5% voter participation, so nobody was really voting. This is kind of both with, this is with delegates, by the way, so without delegates, that would be like hell. So people don't really vote, and um, this is like the quickest data that I could find. There's a lot more other people, so Uniswap, Optimism, people barely vote, they barely get past 10%. In some cases, Compound did reach 10% around here, here, but that's very rare. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and then finally, being a voter, being someone who participates in DAOs, you don't get paid for that. You don't get paid to actually contribute for governance. That's something that really happens for delegates. There was one example of where uh, delegates or voters got paid, and that was like optimism. So, but that was like very specific. If you had enough voting power delegated to you, or you, you held that much, and you participated in all the votes, then you got paid. But really, it's a rare case to just have a general voter get paid. So that's kind of what led to having delegates. No one was getting paid, they don't have resources, and then finally, nobody was really participating. So that kind of leads on to, okay, so what do delegates actually do? So besides living on Discord, we're also in the forums, um, but the main job of a delegate is, as you could see before, there's not really a lot of participation in DAOs, so that, that's where delegates kind of step in. So delegates, they have professional expertise, so that could be in different domains. They could be financial, they could be data analytics, they could be risk analytics, it could be different. Um, that kind of depends on the DAO and what they kind of need. So if you have a DeFi protocol, like Aave, you might have a service provider like Gauntlet, which is like risk, risk anal analysts, and there will be a delegate on the side. So instead of token holders who don't have times, here we are, you give us your power and we will just say on your behalf. And why do you kind of want that? Well. If you want the DAO to do well, because it's a business, you will trust people who have the expertise to kind of push the DAO forward for you. If not, they might stagnate, and then if proposals don't go push, they, they don't go forward, then the DAO is really gonna struggle. Uh, so yeah, so delegates, some simple things is, we vote on proposals, that's like the most basic one. So kind of what goes into voting proposal, it depends on the team, but you can an analyze it internally using different resources and depending on the proposal. If it's quite simple, like we wanna send money, to a contributor or to a service provider, you're gonna to have to analyze that. If it's like we're gonna do a partnership with, let's say, Nevermind or someone else, then that could take a lot more research. Um, alongside that, we also com communicate with the different teams in the forums, so you could be working with the core team, you could be working with different service providers, or you could also be working with large delegates. Um, so a lot of it does come down to communication, and that kind of is replying to discussions, proposals, and also offering your own proposals if you think there's something else that can be changed. 
Um, and then finally, just attending community calls, which can happen on a weekly basis. So that's kind of a general work workflow. Um, and then here are a couple examples as well. So the first one you see here is just like voting. So whenever a delegate kind of votes, they have to keep a track record. A track, a track record is really helpful so you can understand when delegates are being active. So in Mahesh's last talk, um, he kind of went through people, they, when they delegate, they delegate and that's it. They don't really, de they don't really re delegate. So if you track your vote history, um, you can identify what is a good delegate. So at my previous company, Stable Lab, we made it very simple. We had a form post, and we, tracked, we posted every single vote. Um, and we also put a reason, so you can see the rationale. Well, this one, following the committee. And then when there wasn't a committee in this case, we wrote our own reasons for it. Um, and this takes up quite a lot of time. Um, in, in our case, we were probably doing 20 to 30 votes a week sometimes. And then on the left, you can see, so that's just me participating, I think, in Arbitrum in the Arbitrum forum, so like literally living on the forums. I think like every other day I was posting a comment like about like a grants framework because a team was asking for around 5 million USD. And then finally at the bottom you can see this is us summarizing the RVA finance governance process because it was kind of a mess. So alongside, alongside doing our normal work, you'll see that delegates kind of take the time to like improve the governance process. So that's what kind of stable lab did like Aave. Um, you also have other examples of Open Zeppelin, which is a security team. They helped improve Compound's um, governance process as well. And then kind of like showing face. So by showing face, I kind of just mean like showing up every single day. You want your delegate, just like a politician, to like be active, show that you're awake, show that you care. Uh, if you're there, you care. So, but how do you kind of do that? Um, a lot, you kind of have to do insightful and meaningful comments. So in the forms, you might see people who kind of do like, oh, um, this is a great proposal. Oh, when token. That's not really helpful. So when you do write a comment, you want it to be like, it, there's either like constructive feedback, it's nice, um, or maybe you're just being mean, but it is helpful in the long term. So the idea is that you want to be something meaningful. Um, also, communicating with the core teams and service providers. Um, one thing that I've noticed now that I moved to Nevermind is when I see other service providers who want to work with DAOs, they really struggle or they fail to because they don't have a relationship. So if you're going to spend like a hundred thousand of dollars or millions of dollars with a team, you really need to have a relationship where you can trust. Um, like in any type of business really, when you bond with someone, you trust them a lot more. So you really need to show this by communicating with them, whether that, whether that be like jumping on a weekly call, bi-weekly call. It's something that we did at Stable Lab. Like we would work with uh, teams and jump on calls with them bi-weekly, have a catch up, see what was happening, what was bad, what was good, get their feedback um, and give our insight. And then finally, uh, attending community calls. This feels like a really simple thing, but it's actually really powerful. Um, like, if you attend these community calls, you get used to the same faces that, that you see in like a certain committee. So being part of Compound Optimism, you see the same faces weekly, weekly. You know who they are. You can reach out to them. You kind of build this like, it's like a weird bond, a weird trust where like, okay, well, we probably haven't spoken. I know you've got a weird profile picture. You're anonymous. It's a dinosaur or whatever. But we've seen each other like for the past few months. We can like have this open communication line. Um, and it does really help actually because this is still the early days of DAOs, and there's barely any people really. So when you do get involved in governance, it's kind of no, kind of easy to know who's who. And then kind of the next step of being a delegate is kind of like sharpening your axes. So it's this saying of like, always learn, don't stop learning and researching. So I kind of got into governance a year ago, and literally within a year ago, I think we were one of the, my, this is my boss here, by the way. So we were like the first firm, Stable Lab. There was Flipside, besides MakerDAO, uh, there were like two governance firms. And since then, I think there's like 10, 15 probably now. So it's come quite a long way. There's a lot of more governance firms. And to stay competitive, you have to stay up to date and understand what's happening. So not only is that to do with governance and the different governance systems that are coming into place, so moving on from one token voting to quadratic voting, etc., cetera, um, but also like, staying up to date with the protocol and the DAO updates. So, for example, if we're working with Euler and they're going to release a version 2 or they're going to release an update, we need to stay up to date with that and stay consistent with that. And then you do that in different ways, like I said before. So you, you communicate with the team, you read the forms and the discussions, and then finally, in the wider space, like we all probably do, you use crypto Twitter. All the alphas on crypto Twitter, it's always there. So stay up to date with that. You learn from there. And a lot of these governance challenges that we face, a, a lot of DAOs are facing. So what Aave may face, Compound, Euler, Balance are probably facing as well. So it's good to have these open minds and check each forms because you can probably learn from each other over here. 
And then finally, the final thing is you can probably identify key opportunities to advance the DAO. So a good example is probably Aave. Um, so Aave works quite a lot with balance time with other protocols. So if you have a good understanding of how they overlap, then it's very easy to work with those different protocols. So it doesn't mean just because you work with one protocol, let's say Aave, you only work for Aave. A part of your job, because crypto, DeFi being modular, is you probably work with these other DAOs. So it is in your best interest to understand that. Um, another good example is probably with Optimism. So Optimism like pioneered this retroactive public goods funding. They've done this framework. A lot of layer twos really enjoy this. So Arbitrum and I think Stark now are also interested in this. So the way that their teams are learning from this is that they have been like talking to Optimism, the, the team who are involved in that, but also some of the batch holders who participated in that. And then finally, what are some of the delegate tools that you have in the delegates like tool belt? Senate, yeah, wow, the co-founder, the founder's right here, wow. No, but um, it, it really is a good tool. So being part of Stable Lab, we had like 20 votes a week. Um, and being the governance lead, like I had to, like before Senate, um, track these votes manually. So that meant me going on snapshot every day, checking that we voted across like 10 different protocols. Um, so Senate kind of summarized that for us, but I don't want to dive into that because they'll probably touch on that. Um, and then we had June analytics. So depending on like the analysis that we were doing, it really helped for us to understand um, the different delegates that were involved in post, uh, protocols and who we wanted to reach out with. And then finally, like a few specific um, governance news, newsletters to like summarize, Stable Lab, Tally, Boardroom. But you, kinda, like, you can kind of see like, there's not really a lot happening. Like I wasn't going to add Notion because like, I don't know, I feel like probably everyone kind of uses Notion. But the delegate tool bag is very little right now. There's not a lot of governance tooling for delegates, and delegates are still kind of struggling. Um, there's a lot of admin and manual work going involved. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. And then keeping an eye open. So as a delegate, you kind of have this, um, un this oversight of the whole DAO space. You kind of understand what's happening across different DAOs. You can see what's going good, what's going bad. So we should learn from the good. I should have probably added that in there as well, but I wanted to highlight the bad. Um, so there can be bribes. So when you see proposals that are being offered by people, you will have to check if people are being paid to do those proposals because that's not good, it's not ethical. Um, there can be people putting people into, other pos like, into higher positions. You kind of want to like, be aware of these things and like, call them out. Um, yeah, it's not ideal, but there are some bad actors in the space, so it it's worth being aware of this and knowing that this happens. And then finally, what is like, the next steps for delegates? So an alternative name for delegates is the protocol politician. And this is just a bit of like what I think is going to happen with the next stage of delegates and their like version two. So yeah, conversation for delegates. We don't really get paid. We get paid in different ways. We're very creative, but it's not always by being a delegate. Normally we do other types of work. So as I mentioned earlier, I was part of a grants committee, operations lead and a, and a governance lead for these other protocols. But it was, it was barely for being a delegate. So I think that over time, delegates will become a, a, a lot more reliant and there'll be compensation for them. But Following that, I think right now there'll be more companies than individuals. So as I mentioned, when Stable Lab started and we moved into governance, that, there were like two protocols, two governance teams at the time. Now there's like 10 plus, 10, 15. And we noticed that a lot of people are coming together, they're pooling their resources and they're tackling it in a much more like constructive manner. Um, and in doing so, I think these com companies will focus on a specific set, skill set. So service providers, you'll have risk analysis like Gauntlet, Chaos Labs, You'll have governance-focused teams like Stable Lab. You'll have data as well, like Flipside. So I think we're going to see a lot more of these teams where they're a lot more niche and less generic teams. Uh, but in doing so, I think we're also going to hopefully move to a mixture of voting systems. So right now, we kind of have one person, one vote. Um, and that's all we kind of use, which is, uh, that's like a whole other talk, to be honest. But like, that's like very plutocratic. So if the more money you have, the more Sorry, the more, yeah, the more money you have, the more power you have, which isn't really good. And so we kind of want to move away from that. It's not to say that it's bad, it's just not ideal. And there, there is a space to use different voting mechanisms. Um, and a good example is Optimism's um, collective council. So they have like a token house and a citizen house. And the citizen house was used to allocate the retroactive public goods funding. So they each play a role there. Um, and then finally, I think, from my conversations with like investment firms and VCs, it feels like they're very interested in governance advisory and analysis. So potentially we'll see what happens. Um, it's a bit like unclear, but some people seem involved in like getting consult governance consulting firms and getting them involved in governance and getting their support since governance is quite a niche thing and not a lot of people really understand it. What's next? Yeah, so I guess in summary, governance is early. So if you want to get involved, honestly, it's 
yeah, get involved. It's early. There's a lot to do. I've only been in the space for a year, but I've worked with a lot of the top protocols, learned a lot of great people. Um, but in a basic way, it's really simple. So just build a foundation and stay consistent. Always keep learning. Communicate with a lot of people. Be open-minded uh, and just be nice. Um, yeah, that's it, I think. Yes, it is. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Questions from the world, then. Sorry. So I have one. Yeah. I fully understand the benefits of the operation of the spectrum of the app. Yeah. From a more general perspective, one of the idealistic benefits of the app is the fact that the app is meant to better align the most long-term community members, users, product, whatever, with what the organization of the app actually does. But in this case, it seems like you were an external service provider comes in and votes on behalf of these stakeholders. So as an external stakeholder, you are something that how do you ensure that you are representing it with some the long term No, I think that's a good question actually. So yeah, I I would say we are external we are external stakeholders, but at, at the rate where nobody internally really cares, so that's what, kind of where delegates came. People internally, the, the, the internal stakeholders, let's say, they don't have the time, they don't have the resources. They might like the project, but they can't dedicate time to it. So I guess, ideally, you would have internal people, but if you don't have the money or the resources or the actual talent inside, then I guess you have to look outside, don't you? So I guess that probably tackles the first problem. But ideally, yes, you would have people internally. But I guess the perk of having these external stakeholders is that we. It's harder to collude with us and be biased because if you have internal stakeholders, people form these relationships between each other, and even though you might trust each other, you'll then end up liking each other and saying, "Oh, we'll keep this person." Um, I think a great example is in MakerDAO, um, where I don't know if I, but it's on the form, so it's fine. But they used to have a core unit. I think it's called the Strategic Happiness Core Unit. And from my interpretation of like reading the forms, a lot of the MakerDAO members were like supporting on keeping them. It was like 50-50, um, and from my understanding, it was that like, it, it was more for a relationship to keep them than anything, because they were a team that cost 1.5 million for like swag and stuff. So I guess like, the perk of having external stakeholders is that like, there's less likely to be bias and collusion. That can still happen, but they are separate. But the way I've seen with governance teams is that they, even though they're external, they try to stay internal, and they try to like stay as aligned with a protocol as much as they can. Um, and I try to like emphasize that with the communication. So attend the community calls, stay up to the protocols and the forms. And I guess that's as much as like any internal stakeholder would do as well, if that makes sense. Yes. Well, if you were talking about uh, the evolution of validator of the content, is it actually what happened with the delegate? Is it actually what happened with the delegate? Okay. So you were talking about the evolution of delegators to companies. And this is actually what happened with validators becoming companies. So do you see an overlap in the future between of the roles of delegators and validators? Because actually with the governance that we go through, a more you know softer way to improve it, do you think that the two roles will overlap in the future? Yeah, no, that's a really good question, actually, yeah. And I think so, yes. I think with what we're seeing with DYDX, with them moving to this Cosmos app chain, um, they are combining validators with governance. So I, I, I think depending on the protocols and how they want to move forward, if they do go to this app chain type of style, I think it is somewhat good to have this combination. My only issue with having this combination is that, like, um, if you look at the DYDX forms, a lot of the validators don't have governance experience, and a lot of the governance people don't have validator experience. So it might force them to work, to work together, but it feels like this forced connection for now. But yeah, I, I think I, I do expect to see more of it, but I'm hoping that DYDX would be like an example and show us how it can be done, but I do expect to see it. Yeah, and so in this case, data governance will actually be this kind of thing. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, which we kind of exciting, yeah. We haven't seen, we haven't seen meta governance for a while, actually, yeah. Expertise on a particular issue because they've been working on that issue, and so then they're a delegator in that sort 
domain of expertise. So whenever you see a future like that, if that is a good kind of approach, or you think delegates really should be the organizations that are just focused on being delegates. No, the former. So um, if is it okay? Like, so you mentioned only a product. Does that apply to service providers? Would you say as well? Yeah. Oh yeah. Then yeah, definitely yeah. I think that's where I think it's going to happen. Actually, where it's going to move. So I think we're going to see less delegate companies, just only governance delegate companies, but more companies that are building a product. They provide a service, and their delegates on the side. Like, if you have Gauntlet, who works for so many protocols, it's in their best interest to also be delegates, delegates as well. If they're getting paid for them, they should show that they're actually staying interested in the protocol as well. So I think, yes, both protocol, uh, both service providers and product, pe product teams, yeah. I, I see them not having, let's say, a deep governance arm, but let's say one or two individuals who may work with these pro in these DAOs, staying up to date, but also like, ha like more managing the relationship and communication um, and voting, yeah. Yeah, maybe showing face. Yeah, I don't mean physically, but you know, a good question. So I, I think even if you're anonymous, it's fine because if you have like your Twitter and your Discord name the same, you can still build that reputation. Um, one example is in like in MakerDAO, there are a few large anonymous delegates and they've been long running, like some of the most trusted delegates in MakerDAO, they've been anonymous and they're perfectly fine. Um, but let's say they want to take that, um, reputation elsewhere and people aren't aware of that, it's still fine because they have that in MakerDAO. But if you are starting from scratch, it'll be quite hard. Like, if I was to start, go anonymous, it'll be hard for me because uh, I've already built my reputation with my own personal name. But I think if you're starting from scratch, anonymous is perfectly fine. And in some cases, it might actually be better as well. <laughs>